Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So in this lecture, so I will start with uh, the portion which I wanted to discuss in Brahma Gupta's Kuttakara Dhyaya and then we will move on to discuss the content of a very important manuscript called the Bakshali manuscript. So in the last lecture, so I discussed about this Varga Prakriti problem and the Bhavana principle. So now I am going to start with that. So I will quickly recapitulate this Varga Prakriti and Bhavana. So and then move on to illustrate this principle as to how this can be used to derive a certain expression which we found in Sulva Sutras. Sulva Sutra gave a very interesting expression for the value of root 2. So, it was expressed in the form of a sum of rational numbers and we will be able to see now how that same expression can be arrived by the application of Bhavana principle. So, that is the first part of our discussion and then we will illustrate with uh, one more example and then move on to the Bakshali manuscript. The Bakshali manuscript, so is something which is very, very unusual both in its content as well as the way it was discovered. There are so many manuscripts that you will find for various works. So, in the form of palm leaf, in the form of paper, in the form of bridge bark all that. So, this is the only manuscript that is very, very ancient. So, the period is something which is uh, estimated uh, to be around uh, third century, fourth century by some people and uh, some others have expressed it to be around seventh century. But uh, no scholar agrees that it can be beyond 7th century based on the content as well as the language. So, we will discuss a little more uh, about it as we proceed. And uh, one important result which is found in Bhakshali manuscript is something which is quite remarkable in terms of the sophistication that it has in obtaining the value of certs. So, it is a very interesting formula, so that one finds and uh, this formula has been sort of misrepresented by Kaye and uh, it has been thoroughly analyzed by Channa Basappa in his paper in 1975. In fact, Channa Basappa has written some three, four articles. So, primarily on uh, Bakshali manuscript, all of them are quite scholarly articles and uh, he actually analyzes the way a particular verse, so which he calls as Bakshali Sutra, okay, like Aryabhata Sutra. So, it is also in the form of a very small sutra, just a small couplet and it gives a very interesting uh, expression for obtaining approximate value of uh, square root of a non-square number. This we will discuss in great detail and uh, obviously, we do not have any kind of evidence as to how the author of Bakshali would have obtained this result. So, it is anybody's guess, but uh, we will think of a plausible derivation. So, with that more or less our lecture will be over. So, to recall the expression which I wanted to derive using Bhavana principle, so which has been stated in Sulva Sutra is the following. Pramanam tritiyena vardhage tat chaturthena atma chatustrimshena vunena saviseshaha. So, this is the bodhayana Sulva Sutra which presents the expression for the value of root 2. So, he says pramanam tritiyena vardhage so, you increase by one third, tat chaturthena, one fourth of this means the previous value, but this one fourth he says atma chatustrimshena unena, una is subtraction, atma chatustrimsha 
chaturstrimsha is 34 so one the 134 has to be removed from the previous value which amounts to this expression so what does it amount to so it is 577 by 408 and this value is almost correct to six decimal places so for root 2 so this is the bodhayana silva sutra so you may recall this silva sutra was written so around 800 bc or prior to that that is the estimate most interesting thing about this is so here it is said saviseshaha saviseshaha essentially translates to not putting any equal sign but approximate okay so visheshaha vartate so this is, that is okay how did sulvakaras arrive so we showed a certain method so a geometrical construction by which one could get this expression but now we are going to uh, even uh, this expression one does not know because Sula sutras are sutras in a terse form and therefore uh, no explanations so in the sutras the text themselves but the commentaries come much later and there too we do not find much of a explanation with, the, with the reference to the approach which the Sulvakaras might have taken in arriving at this and therefore some 3 4 approaches have been suggested by scholars by which they would have arrived at this expression. Anyway, so currently we will be trying to arrive at this expression using the Bhavana principle. So, to recall the Varga Prakriti and Bhavana, so we have an equation of this form x square minus dy square is equal to k, where d is the non square number greater than 0. So, whose approximation we want to find out? So, k is some of a integer. So, the idea behind posing this problem was to find x and y which are integers and it turns out that the uh, motivation could be in trying to find out the value of root d one of the motivations for solving this. So, this inequality shows that the successive values which can be generated from x y which satisfies this equation will be better and better approximation for root d. So, this can be shown from this inequality, this inequality can also be worked out which is not very difficult to see. So, all that you need to remember is we move from x y, x y is any guess. So, given d given k you can always find some x y which will satisfy this equation. So, and uh, from that you move on to the other values by doing this Bhavana principle and we will see that we will get better and better approximation for root d. So, this is the equation. So, this is the equation you start with. So, to start with as you can see, so what you can do is, so if x and y are sufficiently large, you can easily see that d is going to be root d is going to be x by y. So, this is how we start with in order to uh, get better and better approximations. So, even if it is not, so after a few convergences you will see that it will be very close to root d. Okay. So, let us start with this equation. So, as a first approximation for root d, we take x y and then what you do is, so this is the that root of x by y can be taken as 0th order approximation okay, for this equation. The first approximation is by doing bhavana with itself and x square plus d y square <coughs> by 2 x y. So, this is the first thing. So, remember, so this is what we do. So, this is how we this is the equation which we are going to repeatedly do. Okay. Now, using so 3 and 4, see, so you will get 2 x square minus 1 by 2 x y, and this can be expressed in this particular form. Fine. So, our second approximation, so all that we need to do is so we have to plug in x1, y1, so in this, and it just turns out to be this. So, x1 by y1 is this, so this equation, so you just have it and then you express this. So, now you get uh, this pattern you can see, so this, this expression as such repeats, so in the second approximation, fine. So, now let us go and see, so this approximation which was given in Sulva Sutra is 1 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 into 4 and the next term will be minus 1 by 3 into 4 into 34. In the denominator, you will find the same terms appearing again. So, you will find uh, see. So, y then y into 2x 
then y into 2 x into one more term. So, you can see that you get the. So, in general one can show that. So, the rth approximation will be of this form. So, we will start with this equation see this equation x square minus d y square. So, suppose d is equal to 2. So, this will be satisfied with x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 1. So, we get 3 by 2 and so by regrouping this. So, we can show that. So, this is the expression for root 2 and Sulva Sutra stopped here. So, they gave the first four terms. So, Pramana, Tritiyena Vardhayet, Tat Chaturthena, Atma Chatustrimshena Onena and it said Saviseshaha. So, that actually gives a value correct to six decimal places almost and they stopped there and one can show that the next term is going to be this and the next term and so on. So, this is something which can be straight away obtained by using this. Now, I will show one more example and then I will move on to. Ah, so, suppose you want to find out root 3. So, you can start with this Varga Prakriti equation 7 square minus 3 into 4 square this satisfies this. So, our initial choice is 7 and 4 x y. So, then so this successive ap application of Bhavana principle leads to this equation and this if one were to write. So, with 1 is the first thing. So, one can uh, regroup this and then write it in this particular form. So, that is why we see that as an application to uh, Varga Prakriti and Bhavana principle one will be able to generate. So, the expressions for certs in this particular forum and this is something which will go on. In fact, uh, here one should not have this sort of equality, it is not exactly equal because it is something which is going to be done after uh, each term you will see that the value increases, uh, the accuracy increases. Okay. So, now I move on to the Bakshali manuscript. As I was mentioning this Bhakshali manuscript was something which was discovered by a stroke of luck. Apparently, a farmer was digging somewhere and so he suddenly discovered a manuscript as he was excavating soil somewhere. And this manuscript is in the form of birch bark. So, today it is very very hard to find manuscripts written in birch bark but the earlier that was one of the medium which was used for writing. So, we can find manuscripts uh, in palm leaf, but the birch bark manuscripts are very very hard to see. So, this is in birch bark and uh, they have found about 70 folios as you can easily understand. So, if this has been lying under the soil for quite long time. So, it is uh, something which is in a pretty damaged condition. So, anyway, so that was uh, discovered and uh, this is in 1881 and uh, this farmer so did not simply ignore it, but uh, took it meticulously to this person and that person took it to it uh, went in it passed on into several hands and uh, this was first published in 1922. So, I was referring to Kai. So, this Kaye was uh, the first person to publish it in the form of a text, but the manuscript is still there, but it is in London. So, and uh, recently it was uh, edited once more and published by Hayashi. So, Hayashi is a Japanese scholar and uh, he has published quite a few works and uh, one of them is this Bakshali manuscript. And the place of discovery, so they say it is uh, close to Peshawar around 80 kilometers and it is named after the village. Okay, so, where it was discovered. The story goes like this an inspector of police. So, discovered the manuscript while digging. So, who was uh, and uh, it was handed over to assistant commissioner and it further went on to the general Cunningham and it was passed on to Hornell and then uh, Hornell 
So, in fact, uh, for some uh, reason he got interested in the manuscript and uh, curiosity he studied it. So, he made a few presentations, I think some 3 4 presentations. So, as this uh, narration goes, in uh, the very next year, so it was discovered in 81 and 82. So, in Bengali, uh, in uh, Asiatic Society of Bengal, he made a presentation and then in 1883 and then once again in the Oriental Conference in Vienna in 1886 and a revised version of the paper. So, in 1889, in 1902, he presented this Bakshali manuscript to Bodleian Library and that is where it is. So, the original manuscript is there in London. Fine. So, as regards the date of the manuscript, so as I was mentioning, so there is a lot of uncertainty and uh, Kai places it around 12th century CE, Datta and others, so place it around 3rd century, so they place it should be between 200 to 400, Hayashi says it should be around 7th century. So, all of them interestingly, so say that we have arrived at this date based on the language which is there, based on the content which is there, based on the script which is found there. The script, so scholars have said it is Sharada and the language they say is Gatha. So, it is a form of Prakrit and of course, the content of the manuscript. So, certain problems which are being discussed have also been analyzed to estimate the date of the manuscript. So, this is how it roughly looks like. I mean this is a very poor photograph. So, this is somewhat more refined. So, this is how it uh, a sort of uh, looks like a typical page of the manuscript. So, a lot of uh, things got damaged and whatever can be deciphered in spite of this so has been attempted by various scholars. One interesting thing about this Bakshali manuscript is so, it sort of segregates this numerals and any kind of calculation will be put in the form of some table, some lines are drawn. So, when things are arranged like this, see suppose there are numbers one below the other, so they represent some kind of a fraction. Suppose it is, uh, suppose this is 7, this is uh, 5, so it will be sort of 7 by 5, something like this. So, this is the convention and if you have 3 numbers arranged, the first will be, so the uh, suppose we have uh, 5, 3, 8, so it will be 5 plus 3 by 8, that kind of a thing. So, it is the kind of convention. So, we find certain uh, notations employed and the numbers are all segregated by bars. So, a few uh, remarks would be in place regarding the uh, process of deciphering the contents of a manuscript. So, the style in which people have been writing in those days is far far different from the style that is adopted by us today. So, if you look at any typical manuscript, so most of them are written in a very 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 tight manner. So, what is written in something like 8 inches by 1 inches or 1 and a half inches or 2 inches, so depending upon the palm leaf. So, can we put in some 2 A4 pages, so that is the kind of uh, very, very tightly written and very, very small. So, it is uh, extremely difficult unless the scholar is trained to decipher the content of a manuscript. The second thing is there will be no clear markers. So, the chapter or full stop etcetera, so they are not uh, found and uh, only in a few rare manuscript do we find all this uh, markers, so which actually help us in deciphering the content. And particularly in the case of Bakshali manuscript, the problem is all the more acute for the following reason. Suppose you want to edit a text Arya Bhatiya, so you will find some 20 manuscripts in various places, 200 manuscripts sometimes depending upon the popularity of the text. But in the case of Bakshali manuscript, this is the only thing that is available and therefore, corroborating or uh, collating it with some other thing is impossible and it is in a deteriorated condition. And, uh, it is also completely sort of jumbled, so disordered as it was sort of discovered there and uh, how much is lost, how much is there available, so this is also not known. So, there is a sort of colophon, so which has been identified by scholars 
that uh, it is written by, so this much is known by Chajaka whom they saw, they call the king of calculator. So, I was mentioning to you about an interesting formula presented in this Bakshali manuscript. So, the formula is to find out the square root of a non-square number. So, suppose we have a number n, so which can be expressed as a square plus b. So, let us assume a square is something which is close to n and less than n. The formula which is given in the manuscript can be written in this form. So, root n is a plus b by 2 a minus b by 2 a square by 2 times a plus b by 2 a. So, this quantity actually sort of repeats itself here. So, this is the famous Bakshali formula and uh, this particular form a plus b by 2 a is something which has been presented by Kiran also. You have one more term added to that. So, naively one feels that this should be a much better approximation than a plus b by 2 a. How did this Bakshali uh, author arrive at this formula? So, this we will be discussing towards the end of our lecture. But before that, I wanted to give you the verse, so which presents this formula. And Kaye in his first edition, so he has presented it, uh, the verse like this. So, there is a lot of, see as I was mentioning it is too difficult unless the person is sort of quite conversant with the subject. So, wherein he knows the content. So, it is almost impossible to split the words appropriately and there could be a lot of errors which occur in doing so and that seems to have been committed by Kaye too. Anyway, a sort of improvised version of this is this akrite slishta krityunath. If you see in his edition, he simply calls krityuna, krityunath shesha chedo dvisangunaha tadvargadala samslishta hriti shuddhi kriti kshayaha. This is the formula which in modern notation translates to this expression 6. So, in fact, after uh, serious analysis, uh, so Channa Basappa has arrived at the right formulation of the verse. So, wherein this this should be a sort of compound word Tadvargadala Samslishta Hritihi Suddhi Kritihi Kshayaha. So, I will discuss in great detail as to how we can decipher this from this uh, set of words which are found in this sutra. So, in fact, uh, it has been translated as the, the mixed third is lessened by the square portion, the difference divided by twice that and so on. So, this is the kind of translation which has been presented by Kaye and Datta who is a serious scholar. So, to whom we owe a lot of our understanding to Indian mathematics, he has uh, said that this is all wrong and completely meaningless. So, to decipher the formula as simply a plus b by 2 a and then say this is the same as the key round formula is something which is meaningless. It seems to be uh, done uh, rather unscrupulously that is what uh, it amounts to because, so there are various other evidences by which one will be able to clearly understand that this does not mean this. So, as has been clearly pointed out by Channa Basappa, why do we call it unscrupulous? So, so, there are a few reasons which I will quote one or two. So, this, this has been brought out in an article, a scholarly article in Ganita Bharati. So, it is a mathematics journal in 1975 by Channa Basappa. So, he says, see as you would have seen even in other lectures which were given by Professor Sri Ram on uh, Brahma Sputta Siddhanta or Aryabhatiya. Aryabhatiya of course, does not give various examples whereas, Bhaskara, Brahma Gupta they always. So, giving a certain general formulation they immediately give illustrative examples. So, Charna Basaba says, so soon after the sutra is presented we have a numerical example and the numerical example simply amounts to this. If this amounts to this then why would one simply say that the formula is only confining to the first two terms in this series. So, this is the first objection. So, nobody is going to give a certain illustration which is completely disconnected from the sutra which is stated before. 
and he also says that uh, so no general rule is preserved but the solution itself indicates the rule so this is an observation which has been made by kaye and uh, sennabasappa says that this violates his own observation okay fine so with this i move on to the uh, the explanation of this verse, this is quite instructive and therefore I thought I will spend some time in trying to explain to you the kind of approach that has been taken by Chernabasappa in arriving at, this is a very scholarly article. See here we have the verse, akrite slishta krityunat shesha chedaha dvisangunaha tad vargadala sam slishta hrithihi shuddhi krithihi kshayaha, so this is the sutra. Here the word kriti appears, see, slishta kriti, you understand, slishta kriti unat, slishta kriti unat. So these are the three terms that appear, three words. And once again we have the word kriti appearing here, shuddhi kriti hi. Usually the word kriti is understood to be, uh, square. So, this has acquired the meaning of square so much after the time of Aryabhata, Bhaskara and so on, wherein they very clearly say Kriti hi means square. But Kriti hi as I was telling uh, in the previous lecture that Kriti hi generally means a composition. Okay. So, Tasya Kriti hi, Asya Kriti hi, right. So, Kalidasa Kriti hi. So, Kriti is basically, so it, uh, it is derived from the root kru, okay. So, kru means doing a certain process, that is all it is. So, and therefore, it can mean the uh, writing of a person, it can mean the work done by a person, so in general in. Here in this context, Basapa says that Kriti has to be understood not as square, but as square root. So, Shuddhi Kriti hi, therefore means fairly accurate square root, fine. So, Kriti, so this is very interesting analysis which has been done. So, there is nothing which prevents us from interpreting it as square root if we look at the derived meaning of the term, because it has various other applica applications also in various other fields in various other senses. This is the first observation that he makes. And the second observation that he makes is the word una, una normally means minus subtraction, okay. So, this lessened from that, that is how it means. So, here he says that this una has to be taken as division and not as subtraction. And in fact, he quotes scriptures. Uh, to prove the point that he tries to make. So, with these two observations, we move on to uh, look at the arguments presented by Chennabasappa. As I was mentioning, the word Kriti generally refers to square, but the Bakshali author, so being prior to Aryabhata. So, the first uh, reason that he says is, so this Bakshali, so we do not very clearly know when it was composed, but uh, it might be following some tradition which has been much earlier also. So, according to Basapva, this has been written even prior to Aryabhata. So, around that period the Kriti term was reserved to refer to square if it occurs in a mathematical context. So, but prior to that the author is not compelled to use it in that sense. So, the words pick up various senses at different points of time and therefore, this is first reason that he says. And he also says that if you look at the entire Bakshali manuscript, the word Kriti does not appear anywhere else, but for this sutra. So, wherever the process of square had to be referred, the author uses Varga. So, so he says he has reserved the word Kriti to refer to square root and not square. So, this is second observation. So, it occurs in a dozen of other places where he only uses the word Varga. So, as I was mentioning Kriti is a gen generic term which can refer to a deed or a process and therefore, there is no compelling evidence for us to take only to refer to the process of squaring. And uh, for 
this this particular verse he says it has to be taken as square root or mula and he also corroborates this with other evidences from other earlier texts. So, suppose we place this Bakshali manuscript here to Aryabhatiya. So, the only other extant text that we have is the class of texts which are called Sulu Sutra texts. And in the Sulu Sutra texts, so when we discussed that we saw, so I repeatedly hammered the word. So, this Karani refers to sort of square root and that also stems from Kri. So, Kriyate Anena iti Karani. So, and uh, so the Karani refers to square root and therefore, this is also derived, Kriti is also derived from the same root and therefore, it could refer to square root. So, in fact, we have the word Dvikarani, Trikarani referring to square root of 2, square root of 3. So, now we move on to the other word Una. Una, so he says it refers to division. So, how do we substantiate this? So, here he says the word Harana and Pariha both are derived from the root Ha. So, Haranam means division. So, Parihara, Parikriyate, so there also, so it is used in the sense of um, close to this, okay. So, sort of eliminated, so taken away, so it is in that sense. So, in fact, he quotes a certain Panini Sutra, wherein Panini says, Una Pariha, so that itself is stated and therefore, it can be taken to refer to something which is removed and removal is something which is by division process and therefore, una can be taken to refer to division in this sutra, fine. So, now with this, so framework, so we had the word akrite slishta krityunat, so this is how the sutra begins. So, krityunat, so here he says, so he is by dividing by approximate square root. So, kriti is square root, una is division. So, kriti unat is this, a is taken as the approximate square root of root n. See the number is a square plus b. So, kriti unat, so kriti here, slishta kriti, slishta kriti means well known, slishta is well established. So, the square which is well established before this root n is a square and therefore, slishta kriti unat. So, he says he, it is ref, referring to division by a and uh, it comes to a plus b by a. Then we have sesha chedaha dvisangunaha. So, this is the first half of the verse. Akrite, akrite I leave it now. Slishta kriti unat sesha chedaha dvisangunaha. So, sesha is b by a. Chesha chedaha dvisangunaha. Chedaha is divisor. Dvisangunaha multiplied by 2. So, we have b by 2a. You understand? Chesha se chedaha denominator multiplied by 2. So, a plus b by 2a. We have obtained this term. So, in fact, uh, as I was mentioning, so you find this kind of markers in the manuscript. So, suppose we find this number 656. So, this is to be understood as 6 plus 5 by 6 and then 6 by 12. So, 6 plus 5 by 12. In fact, the illustration which has been provided in Bakshali manuscript is one of root 41. So, root 41 can be expressed as 36 plus 5. So, 6 square plus 5. So, you have the same thing appearing. See, 6 is a and b is 5 and uh, so in fact both of them are presented in this manuscript and he says 6 plus 5 by 12. So, this is the uh, reference in the manuscript as to how they start with. So, to complete uh, the analysis of the sutra, so slishta kriti is a. So, the word akrita see the, the square root form ok n. So, tad varga dalaha, see in fact, uh, 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 see approximate I say because this slishta uh, is something sort of known kind of a thing. So, that is why it is referring to a. So, we have a square plus b is the number and the closest square root is a, okay. so it is in this sense. So, then we had see akrite slishta krityunath 
Sheshachedodvisangunaha. The second half of the verse starts with Tadvargadala. So, Tat refers to the previous quantity. So, what was uh, obtained is B by 2A. See, Sheshachedodvisangunaha. So, is B by 2A. Tadvarga refers to the square. Dala is half of it. So, Tadvarga Dala refers to half of B, B by 2A, the whole square. Then we have the word samshlishta hritihi, so which appears in the verse. See, I will just quickly highlight the verse. See, tadvarga dala samshlishta hritihi. So, samshlishta is sort of put together. Okay. So, samshlishta hritihi is a plus b by 2 a. Hritihi means division. So, samshlishtena hriyate, see, so you divide by this, see, so that is how it is. So, what is to be divided is this factor, tadvargadala samshlishta hritihi refers to, so this divided by this quantity, so then he says kshayaha, so kshayaha is sort of subtraction, okay. So, this quantity, this uh, ratio has to be taken as negative and uh, negative to this number which you already obtained. So, this is the quantity from which, so the ratio of this has to be removed and what you get is basically shuddhi kriti hi. So, shuddhi kriti hi is kriti is square root, so a refined value of the square root. Ah, correct, so that is how it is. So, what is the way by which they might have arrived at it. So, a possible derivation is presented now. Uh, suppose n is the third and uh, a is the nearest square which is less than n. So, we start with a and uh, the error at this stage is n minus a square that is why we write that error at this stage is this. So, as a first order approximation, so we write a plus b by 2 a is a 1. So, this is like uh, this uh, see so suppose you have a root of 1 plus x kind of a thing. So, as a first order approximation 1 plus, so 1 by 2 x, so this is how we take, so that is how it is. Okay. The error, so at this stage is obtained by n minus a 1 square. So, 0th order it is and first order it is. So, b 1 is this. So, this a 1 square see, so n is a square plus b and a 1 square we write and what we get is minus b by 4 a square. So, this is the error at this stage. So, what we do is so we start with a b and then we have moved to a 1 b 1. So, the first order approximation is this and this is the error. So, if we want to move to higher order, so essentially, so this is what it is. So, we have started with this. So, this is a 1 b 1 or this is the expression that we have a 1 b 1. The second order approximation so, you use a 1, so instead of a, so you use a 1 here in this expression, so a 1 plus b 1 by 2 a 1. So, you plug in the value of a 1, so a plus b by 2 a minus, so b 1 is this and uh, so this is how it is. So, this is basically the formula which has been stated in the Bakshali manuscript. So, this is the sort of uh, approximation, so which one can keep on doing so further and uh, apparently the manuscript seems to have stopped here. Whether the authors of Bakshali manuscript derived it the, this way is something which one cannot very clearly spell out. I mean it is only a possible derivation and given that 
So, the Indians were sort of fond of this iterative process, it is quite uh, possible that this might have been the approach which they had taken to arrive at this expression. So, how accurate is this approximation? So, we will take one numerical example. So, suppose n is 83. So, the closest uh, square is 9 square. So, a is 9. So, that implies b is 2. So, this is the formula. So, recall a plus b by 2 a. So, minus this square. Yeah. And uh, so, if you substitute these values, so what one gets is so 9.11043304 and uh, you use uh, modern calculators. So, what you get is this expression and you can straight away see that it is correct to 6, 7 decimal places. And suppose you were to choose uh, so 85, 87. So, the closer you take so, there is nothing which compels us to take a as even uh, integer. So, this, uh, this will work even otherwise. The closer you take, the higher the accuracy will be. So, even if you take much, uh, so it is basically a sort of zigzag function which will be close, uh, which will keep on converging to the actual value. I will quickly discuss one more problem an interesting problem which has been presented in Bakshali manuscript uh, and then make a few observations before winding up this talk. There are quite a few interesting examples which have been presented. Ah, so, what has been stated here is there are uh, see I said, so he says only this formula has been stated here. So, a plus b by 2 a is what is implied by the verse. No way one can get from this verse. So, whichever way you see in fact, the problem has been very beautifully analyzed and uh, this unconventional meaning has been assigned to the word Kriti and Vuna after a lot of thought by Chenna Basappa and uh, Datta so has also tried to interpret the verse, but uh, at one or two places you will find a little uh, difficulty in trying to so make various terms to go one with the other and finally, give the meaning. So, Heron I think was in first century, first century, yeah. yeah. So, Panchanam Manijam Madhye Manir Vikriyate Kila Tatrokta Mani Vikritra Mani Mulyam Kiyad Bhavet. So, you see there are uh, as I told you there are a lot of problems in uh, deciphering the manuscript. So, the, the sense of the problem has been understood with the words that have been presented there but not every word is available for us because the manuscript has got damaged. So, it is said uh, Vanijam Madhye, so Vanik is a merchant, so there were five merchants who were willing to purchase something, some jewel. So, he says a jewel is sold among five merchants, the price of the jewel, so he is stated in a complicated manner, so he says, so it is exactly equal to half the money which is possessed by the first fellow plus the sum of the other. So, one third the money possessed by the second fellow and uh, the sum of the others. So, one third the money possessed by the other fellow and the sum of the others. So, one fourth and sum of the others. So, what is the price of the jewel and what is the money possessed by these people? So, this is the problem, fine. So, tribhaga padamsha, tribhaga means one third, padamsha, panchabhaga, so shadamsha, so one sixth. So, this is how he states the problem. And uh, so, if one were to write it, so using modern notation, so this is what it amounts to. See, half of the first merchant plus the sum of the others, so this should be equal because that is the price of the jewel. So, one third the money of the second merchant plus the sum of the others, so one fourth the money of the third person plus and so on. So, this should be let us say this is equal to P. So, this uh, translates to this. So, let us say that this is equal to something q. So, then so what one gets is basically an equation of this forum. So, 377 by 60 q should be equal to p. So, this is what one gets and uh, one can write it. So, 
So, this is 377 r q is equal to where r is any integer. So, Bhakshali actually gives the value p is equal to 377 and q is equal to 60. So, of course, any multiple is also valid and so this is one of the typical problems which can be found in Bhakshali manuscript. This manuscript is also important. So, as I showed you in one of the slides earlier, so in connection with the kind of notations, so this is something which is frequently asked. So, what were the kind of notations which might have been employed by those people in those days? So, this kind of notation, see certain notations are also available. So, besides the kind of tabulations which one finds to segregate the numbers. So, how are they representing division? How are they representing negative quantity? How are they representing some uh, unknown value? So, m1, m2, m3, so all of them are unknowns. So, if one were to put it in the form of notation, so what were the notation employed? So, to a certain extent we get a clue from what is available there and uh, we make a few remarks so in this uh, connection. Scholars have identified that there are at least three kinds of notations which have been employed. One is the notation to represent fraction, so as I was mentioning. So, you place one number below the other, so this is understood as ratio. So, this is uh, one notation, so with a sort of horizontal bar and uh, notation to represent uh, negative quantities. So, this is something which is been noted, so a kind of a plus kind of a symbol. So, if a quantity is negative. So, you write the number and then put a small kind of a mark to the right above it and uh, some scholars have opined that this plus kind of a symbol uh, has to do with the word which they have been employing to refer to a negative quantity rina. So, this rina might have been so represented uh, with this kind of a symbol. So, that is one suggestion which has been given and uh, so this represent certain operations. So, this also can be seen, suppose you have to add two quantity in between. So, this plus symbol is not used for that, so, they use the word ya, u, u t, see. So, u t to refer to and then sometimes mu to refer to the mula, so square root kind of a thing. So, these are certain notations which one can find out in these text and it is in this sense also. So, this manuscript is something which is uh, quite unique and provides us a lot of uh, light on the kind of notations and the kind of problems which they have been attempting in those days. So, in fact, uh, even uh, Amara Kosha one finds Yadricha Vinyase Shunye. So, this is a so, so Shunye Sthane Yadricha. So, this is see that the, the, this quotation. I have provided to just show that uh, some kind of notational form has been employed to represent certain things even in those days, though we do not have very clear evidences as to what has been used. So, because this manuscript is uh, handed over from generation to generation and most of the things have been done orally in the tradition. So, with these few remarks, so we conclude our discussion on Bakshali manuscript. Thank you.